Yeah, that is not going to buff out. <laughs> And if you guys are in the market for a new or fairly new car, you don't want it breaking down like that. So today on Idealist or not Idealist, these are the 27 cars that you'd be an idiot to buy. That's right, 27 cars you need to avoid at all costs. I'm Brad, like, subscribe, and let's go. Oh, Land Rover, for some reason, you just can't make a vehicle that doesn't cost more to own than it does to buy. But everyone expected that. The Evoke in particular, though, has got to be one of the worst. Not only is it unreliable, but even when it is working, this crossover is a total letdown. Let's move on. Hold on a second. You didn't actually think we could make this idealist without mentioning Maserati, did you? The Trident is the official symbol of unreliability. We sometimes joke about buying a used one because they're so cheap since they depreciate more than any other vehicle, which should be your biggest reason to never consider buying a new one or even a lightly used one or especially a heavily used one. <sighs> Look, unless you just hate money, stay away from a Maserati, okay? <laughs> Okay, I'll admit this one stings a bit because I actually always thought these were cool, especially the ones with the V8s. Heck, the Noble 600 used to run this V8. Unfortunately, it's got the trifecta of awful, long repair times, super high repair costs, and frequent repairs. Volvo's come a long way since the 240, and they've definitely had their share of mishaps on the long road they've taken to get to where they are today. Brand new Volvos are pretty good, but that early XC90? Okay, Elon fans, I know you're gonna hate me. Now, I know you think everyone that criticizes Tesla is a total idiot, but this isn't the Model S, Model 3, or Model Y. You guys are safe. The Model X, though, has some serious flaws, including frequent door malfunctions, malfunctioning climate systems, and a whole slew of electrical issues. Kind of ironic for an electric car. Yeah, there's just not much to say about this one. The little car is completely outclassed by almost everything else with four doors, but it somehow costs more to own. Sprinkle in a ton of minor but frequent engine problems and you should avoid this disaster. They are actually kind of fast though. Things don't necessarily get better if you go big, since the Chrysler Pacifica is sort of hit and miss as well. Yep, this one floors me too. But turns out, Honda is capable of building a lemon. The Honda Legend, or called the RLX here in the States, is, or was, well, it's canceled now. It's a vehicle priced way more than similar competitors, which means it's not worth putting up with one of the worst reliability scores that Acura has ever received. These cars have quite a few problems, actually, but transmission failure is the big one. Maybe this car was put out to pasture for good reason. It's cheap, it's made of plastic, breaks a ton, and frankly, there's not much redeemable about it. A used Civic will serve you way better, and it's 100 times more fun to drive. I thought the Cruze was actually a pretty good looking car when they came out, but given its track record for reliability and host of pretty serious recalls, honestly, just stay away. One in three, yes, one in three. That's the number of people who have major issues with their little Fords. And that doesn't sound like a fiesta. Major thing here is the transmission found in these cars. Ford has replaced, well, most of them under warranty, but I'm not convinced even the updated gearbox gets you completely out of the woods. Old Suburbans are reliability kings and absolute workhorses. Ever since 2014 though, they have been going way downhill. And for the last few years, they've been slapped with the lowest reliability scores in their class. You've got your standard engine failure and severe amounts of electrical gremlins. But the nail in the coffin is the frame. Yeah, apparently the frame likes to twist and break. I can't say I've seen that, but yikes. Okay, I'm gonna paint a little picture for you. On a list of the least reliable cars from Consumer Reports and Motor Authority, the Pacifica is the only van to make an appearance. That shows you not only is Stellantis doing something wrong, but there are clearly ways for them to solve the problem without charging so much. We expect better from the company that literally invented the minivan. Come on, Chrysler. Honestly, the Dart stands out as one of the least terrible cars on today's list, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good. 
The worst brakes in its class, coupled with an unreliable transmission, means that there are much better options if you want a decent car. Unfortunately though, this next one isn't one of them. Okay, this one shouldn't surprise anyone. We've mentioned many times that the 500 is a flaming pile of Italian engineering. And while we can just say don't buy a Fiat, we're just gonna point out that the little 500 in particular is especially bad. Frankly, it's just kind of a bad time for little cars all around. But it's never a bad time to go check out the ideal shop. Click the link in the description below and pick up a hoodie or a t-shirt today. The new LFA shirts are pretty sick. Since other than being just a little bit bigger than the Fiesta, the Ford Focus is basically the same car. That means the suspension and transmission problems are, well, you guessed it, the same. I promise it's not all domestics and Italians. After all, Japan has Nissan. And next up is the Infiniti Q50. Now, I wouldn't say that the Q50 is the most unreliable car. It actually is not that terrible in that regard but it is basically the worst handling, worst riding, and has the worst fuel economy in its class. Owner satisfaction for this car is in the toilet. And it's not any cheaper than any of the competition. So yeah, just say no. Oh, Jeep. Let's just lightning round these because it can be overwhelming. The Cherokee, it's underpowered, has serious frequent transmission issues, and an interior that will fall apart. Now the Compass, well, it's just like the Cherokee, except it's uglier, lower quality, and has even less power. The Grand Cherokee, well, it's actually not that bad, but you know there's issues when a car has more than 15 major recalls. The Patriot, well, it's literally just a Jeep Compass, so another underpowered Cherokee. It's somehow worse though, since unlike most Jeeps, it has terrible resale value. And, one last Jeep, and this one, it really hurts, but you know, you should probably avoid the Wrangler. Yes, the Wrangler's problems are well documented and they have been for a very long time. The big difference is that now the Wrangler has real competition with the Bronco and the upcoming smaller, less expensive Land Cruiser. There are dwindling reasons to choose a Wrangler unless you really need that Jeep life. Must be a Jeep thing. Which I understand. After all, I still love a Jeep. Just maybe get an older one. When you buy a Mercedes, you expect perfection, not electrical problems, poor performance, terrible service. But that's exactly what you get with an A-Class. This is the little Benz that couldn't, and we couldn't recommend one. What's crazy is almost one in two consumers have reported major issues. No matter how schwanky you wanna feel, Mercedes GLE is just not the answer. Mercedes still makes some good cars, but the GLE just isn't one of them. Now it doesn't matter how much fun a car is if you never get to actually drive it. Most minis are a blast behind the wheel, but unfortunately, the Cooper Countryman in particular will spend way more time in the shop than on the road. So probably best to avoid these little cars. Like I said earlier, frankly, it's just a bad time for little cars. The 500, Fiesta, Cooper, all not great. The worst though, has to be the Mitsubishi Mirage. <laughs> Yeah, the Mirage, it's a laughable little car. Not only is it poorly made and hilariously low quality, but the thing makes 74 freaking horsepower. That's less than a pencil sharpener these days. You'd have to be juked to buy a juke because the juke is bad. It's ugly, it's slow, and there aren't many redeeming qualities about it. But really, it's just any Nissan with a CVT. That transmission is so bad, it's the reason an entire generation fears continuously variable transmissions. All CVTs aren't great, but Nissans, it's the worst. I didn't know what Nissan was thinking, since the crossover market is the most competitive market there is. And I mean, they know how to build a car. Look at the Z or even the GTR. But when it comes to SUVs, they just don't bring their A game. The current Pathfinder has a terrible interior, lacks power, and worst of all, it's one of the least reliable crossovers you can buy. No. Not Subaru. Well, actually, if you've been following around the saga of the CVT WRX, which you, it's probably not a complete shock that Subaru, as of late, hasn't exactly been cranking out their best work. While the Crosstrek and Outback rank amongst the best in reliability, the Ascent joins the top worst. Small Subaru good, big Subaru bad. 
The old Tribeca wasn't exactly a gold star either. B-Dub's Tiguan isn't necessarily the worst, but it is up there. The only thing that saves it from being a total lemon is that repairs, which you will have to make, aren't super expensive. Besides that, they're underpowered and frankly lack some of that European refinement we've come to expect from Volkswagen. So there we have it, folks. 27 cars you should probably just go ahead and pass on. What did you think of the list? Which ones do you think we got wrong? And which ones did we miss? Let us know down below. Also, go check out this Why You Need up here or whatever YouTube recommends you watch next down here. I'm Brad, this is Ideal. Like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and promise me one thing, keep living the ideal lifestyle. Mm -hmm.